Hi everyone, thanks for uh, watching this video. Um, I'm gonna do an unpackaging today of these Nitrum uh, charcoals that I got. They were a little more expensive charcoal than what I've used before. I have honestly never used these yet, um, but I watched a couple videos and some really phenomenal artists who work in charcoal recommended them, so I thought I'd give them a try. I got um, three different kinds here. They make four different kinds. Um, they make a kind of a hard, I, I think it's an H. I didn't get the H. I'm not a fan of hard charcoal. It tends to just cut right into the paper too much and create indentations. It tends to be more abrasive. I tend to go with softer charcoal. But anyway, I got, I should actually switch these around. I got the HB and then I got the B and then I got their soft rounds. Um, these petites, I guess they're called. And then I bought this um, nice sanding, supposed to be nice anyway, a sharpening block. Normally I just use regular sandpaper like this to sharpen charcoal. Problem is when you have to hold it like this, you know, you might not get a real precise point with it, you know, because you're, you're kind of bending it like that. Of course I could always just mount this on a piece of wood or something like that, but I figured if this works, oops, sorry about that, then that'll be great. I'm also going to um, compare this with some other charcoal that I've used in the past and just see how it holds up. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I encourage you to do so. It really helps me to continue making these videos. Also, be sure to go check out my blog, which is mysketchjournal.com. Make sure you subscribe there because I'm posting a lot of great articles for practical advice for artists and I'm gonna keep posting more stuff there also I'm gonna keep posting more videos so make sure you subscribe for both okay let's uh, open these up here I'm gonna push these aside we're gonna start with the H see what this looks like um, these uh, I think these are like eight dollars or something like that I got them from uh, Dick Blick and you only get five sticks so hopefully it holds up well it's interesting to note is that these um, you can see they're uh, square in shape. They're they're not they have like a square cylinder here. Um, so we'll see how that works. I know a lot of artists tend to sharpen them to a significant point. All right, they come in the nice bubble wrap. Let's see if I lucked out and if they all came undamaged. Sometimes in shipping, these things get busted up. Uh, these tend to look pretty decent also. I'm not noticing any breakage here. So, and this is the B. And what's cool about these is that they color code them. Um, they, they don't t t put B on there, but they have the green on there. So I guess you just have to know or remember that green, sorry, it's getting kind of blurry there. There we go. Sorry about that. You have to remember that uh, green equals B. That's still handy though because when I use any other kind of vine charcoal, you know, it's hard to tell. Am I picking up a hard piece, a soft piece? You can organize them in a case like I have, but it just gets unorganized after a while. And now let's check out these petites. Okay, they look good. None of them are broken. I know that was a common complaint that I heard about in, um, in, in the reviews. Now these are round. I guess that must be what uh, the petite means. I'm going to compare this with the, um, with the, uh, the B. See, they're really, uh, to me, petites, if that's what that actually means, I assume that word is petites there. Uh, feel free to correct me if I'm mispronouncing that. But for me, I, I assume petites meant like really thin. I like to get really thin pieces of vine charcoal and work with it. The problem is that they break very easily, but they're nice for detail in that. But um, this really isn't any thinner. It's just round versus square. Hopefully you can see that there. Now let's open up here. I'm kind of excited about this. The... Um, Oh, that's nice. It's a nice Velcro thing there. This is the sharpener. And let's see what we got. Put that on the side there. It's got a nice plastic wrap. All 
Okay, so it looks like it's got stuff on, it's got sharpening pads on both sides. Um, I'm going to have to play around with this. I'm not sure. They, they're stuck on there pretty good. So as far as a replacement, you know, I'm not seeing how these come off. It's not like a Velcro or something like that. I don't really want to peel it off yet. Um, I'm assuming this here, these are the replacement pads. Let's open these up and see what we got here. Okay, so it looks like, if you can see that there, looks like there's, yeah, this is sticky stuff here. So um, I'm assuming what happens is when these wear down, you have to somehow peel this off and um, then you can uh, you know replace it with one of these it sticks on there my question will be how well do these peel off is there going to be a bunch of debris left on there you know is some of the uh, when I tear this off is it going to break and there's going to be some like paper left underneath or something like that that's going to cause it to be an uneven surface I don't know we'll see hopefully not I'm not going to do that right now for obvious reasons um, because I don't want to, uh, um, you know, I don't, I don't want to use it yet. I don't want to, you know, tear off a good piece there and waste it. But um, that's what you're dealing with with this. Okay, now we're back, and I'm going to just uh, do a test sharpening with this and see how this works. This is the um, the B grade, and this is the once again the square shaped charcoal. So let's see how this works here. It's definitely nicer than um, using a piece of sandpaper and holding it with your hand. So that's good there. I'm just going to put that there, right there. That charcoal dust can be pretty invaluable. I actually have a, um, I bought some uh, Krita Carl color charcoal powder and um, it's great stuff. You can do a lot of effects with it. So now I'm going to sharpen, this is their soft version, and this is an actual cylinder. So let's see how this works. And that's the soft charcoal. We'll stick that there. Okay, so that's pretty good. Leaves some residue on there. Probably one of the things that happens is um, I'm imagining that this doesn't wear down too fast. It's not like charcoal is a really... It's not like you're sanding wood with it where it's going to wear down the sandpaper. But what I assume probably happens is the buildup of the charcoal in the grains here probably happens faster than the wearing down of the sandpaper itself. So anyway, um, I give this my approval. This did a pretty nice job of uh, sharpening the charcoal. I'll have the prices below, the general prices. And I also have, if you go to my blog, um, links to where you can get it i'll leave a link below in my um in the description in this you in this video and that will take you to a resources page on my blog where you can get links on where you can get this stuff so anyway now let's test this out i'm going to see how this stuff actually writes um not writes but draws so i'm going to move this out of the way now this is a soft and let's just see here. Okay, it's um, working good. To me, it doesn't feel a whole lot different or look a whole lot different than other vine charcoal that I've used. But um, and it wears down pretty fast. You can see. You can see there. Let me make sure I got this in the camera. But um, it's nice. I mean, it's, it's definitely nice. Now I'm going to try their B version. Um, let's see how that works. It's definitely um, slightly lighter, but what's what I'm noticing right away is that it's warmer in appearance. It has a slightly, you probably can't see this on the camera, but it has a slightly brownish tinge to it as compared with their soft. They're soft when I look at it, and I'm looking under pretty color correct lights here. Um, I use cool, uh, uh, cool lights in my studio. But what I'm noticing here is that this one, the, um, 
the the soft round has a more cool tone to it and this one the hb this one has a warmer tone really interesting maybe it's just the type of uh, wood that they used um for this particular stick but it, it's definitely a warmer tone so that's very interesting. Okay, I'm going to try one of the um, HBs, and we'll see how that looks. I'm not going to sharpen it, because I don't think we really need to sharpen it just to see what the tone is like. Now, the HB, that's got, it, it's, it's going on nicely. It's definitely a little harder. Then the other one, it's not wearing down nearly as fast. Um, and honestly, I'm not noticing much different of a tone in it. It doesn't seem any lighter. It almost seems darker than this. And it doesn't seem as warm as this. I'm wondering if I got some kind of lemon with this. Not a lemon, but some kind of an, of an anomaly with this one. Um, this looks almost as dark as this. In fact, let me take the HB and I'm going to draw it next to the um, their soft which is supposed to be, you know, soft usually translates to darker. Let's see how that looks. See, I'm not really noticing any value difference whatsoever between these two. So to me, the soft and the HB, really not much difference at all. So in value, I'm still struck by the total difference, by the warmth and the coolness of these two here. Okay, so now let's compare this with some other charcoal. This is just uh, Grumbacher, or Grumbacher, sorry, I always mispronounce that, extra soft um, vine charcoal here. It's, um, and it's a fairly thin stick. It's actually thinner than the nitrum. But let's see what we have here with the extra soft. I'm going to put it right down here. Now, the one thing I will say is this feels more flimsy than the uh, nitrum. The nitrum, and it might be because of the thickness, the nitrum definitely feels like it's not going to break as easy. I'm using a pretty long piece of charcoal too, by the way. But not a whole lot of difference. Um, the one thing I'm noticing is that I'm getting a lot more debris with the Grumbrocker. See all that on the edges there? Let's see, I'm gonna go over this again with the uh, soft. Let's just go over that here. Okay, so one nice thing is that the nitrum doesn't create nearly as much excessive debris as the, um, as the uh, Grumbacher is. Look at all this excess charcoal here on the side. You know, when I blow on that, there's a lot of excess charcoal, a lot of kind of wasted charcoal. Now you could take your paper and try to funnel it into um, a jar or something like that and save the powder, but that can be kind of a pain. So this definitely is a quite a bit more messy than the nitrum. I'm gonna try another brand now. This is Coates Willow Charcoal. And let's see what we get with that. Okay, the coats is going on um, very smooth. Honestly, I probably like the feel of this one better than any of the other ones. It is still creating more um, debris, if you will, on the sides than the nitrum did. It does have a nice smooth velvety feel. I'm going to try the uh, nitrum again. Yeah, the nitrum has more of an abrasive feel still. But once again, not nearly as much debris as you're getting. Uh, so far, the uh, uh, Grumbacher is, has a lot more debris than any of the other ones. But um, this, uh, this Coats is uh, pretty nice charcoal. As far as the depth of it, the, the blackness... I'm not noticing a tremendous amount of difference between these three. Now let's try a blending stump. Let's see how this stuff blends. We're gonna try the uh, nitrum first. 
does a nice job of a nice, very smooth blend. I'm just using a regular old blending stump here. Let's try, make try to use a kind of a different side here. Let's try their B. It definitely uh, kind of loses out. But once again, it's so interesting to me with this Nitrum B, it is so warm compared to this. Very warm. Now let's go to the HB. That's blending very nicely. See, it does give a nice even blend. So I like that. Let's blend the uh, Grumbacher Extra Soft. That blends pretty nicely, but see how I keep picking up all this extra stuff here? Of course, I could just blow that away. But to me, it's not quite as smooth of a blend as the Nitrum. The Nitrum definitely has a smoother blend. Um, let's go with the coats here. I'm going to kind of blend out this way. Now the coats, notice what's happening with the coats that I did not get. It's, it's blending out here very, somewhat smoothly, but it's a little more choppy. And notice right in here how it really blends in. It doesn't hug the paper as well. The Nitrum does seem to hug the paper a little bit better than the Coats does. Um, the Coats really, you know, really seems to dig in there. You can see that borderline right there, hopefully with, um, with that. So, Anyway, that's um, that's kind of a demonstration there of what we have. Let's try erasing. This is just a kneaded eraser. Let's go through the uh, Nitrum Soft. Not bad. There is some. I'm, I'm seeing some stuff there, some kind of a debris. And at the end, I'm going to zoom in on this so you can see um, right now I'm drawing instead of working the camera. Let's try the... Uh, the B. Sorry, that was a soft. This is the B. Same thing, you know, getting some stuff in the crevices. This is a somewhat textured paper, but um, yeah, it doesn't totally come up. And let's try the HB. Once again, not bad, but not incredibly forgiving. Now I'm going to try the Grumbacher. And we're getting about the same results there. You know, when you grind it in there, you're going to get that. You keep in mind that there's a lot of variables to this. I mean, if you're using a very smooth paper, I usually don't do my drawings on this type of paper. I use their um, the Strathmore Tone Tan uh, paper, which is a very smooth paper. So you're probably going to have a little more forgiveness. This is a somewhat textured paper. Now let's try to coats. Yeah, so really there's not much difference in the erasing. Um, when I erase what I blended out, that comes off pretty decent. But um, when you erase what you actually drew on, that does not come out nearly as well. And as far as the powder, this is the uh, Nitrum B powder that I kind of created just from that. Just rubbing it with my finger. It's got a nice smooth blend. Let's try their uh, soft. Once again, it's a smooth, pretty smooth blending powder. They actually do sell their powder in, um, in jars, and they claim it's ultra smooth. So th this stuff is a little bit grainy because this is coming from my sandpaper. Okay, we're just zoomed in there now on that. You can see a little bit closer what we have. Um, once again, you know, the biggest difference I noticed with the Nitrum is compared with the Coats and the Grumbacher is that this does not have nearly as much charcoal debris the Nitrum as the Grumbrocker did when I was drawing it. And the coats had some debris also, not as much debris as the Grumbacher. And there's just a close-up on the uh, Grumbacher and the coats. Anyway, my final assessment is I do really like the Nitrum. Um, besides not having as much debris as the Grumbacher or the coats, the 
biggest thing that I am a fan of is how smoothly it blends. When you blend that as compared to this, and see how that just basically rubs away a lot of the charcoal from the Grumbacher and the coats. You don't get that with the Nitrum nearly as much. I mean, I'm getting it somewhat with the B, but it's not nearly as pronounced, and especially the soft. The soft is very, blends just so nicely. It doesn't um, cut in nearly as much. That's one of the biggest challenges I have with charcoal drawings is when I go in to blend, how it'll blend away those dark areas that I don't want blended away. The Nitrum does tend to hug the paper more. Of course, that might be a little more challenging with erasing, but it's definitely much nicer to blend. So anyway, I hope that helps. Uh, please uh, give a like if you like this video. I'll also leave your comments below. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. I'm going to be posting a lot of other um, videos like this. I'm going to be talking about different colors, different oil colors, and different materials that I'll be using. Also, some advanced charcoal techniques and different tools that i found. And be sure to go to my um, blog, which is mysketchjournal.com. Check that out. Subscribe. I'm going to keep posting articles there that you're going to find very helpful.